Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Autumn Stamp Set, the Ocean uh, Circle Scapes, the Fresh Cut Florals, the Pumpkin Patch, and the Barn Door... Uh, barn door planks, barn door wood planks. It'll be linked below. <laughs> um, and then the circle, um, scapes shakers. So, um, if you guys watch my videos, you know, it's thunderstorming here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it. So my apologies. Um, but anyway, so if you guys watch my channel, you know that I am a big fan of getting more out of the things that you already own. And so a couple of weeks ago, I did a video using the Oceanscape Circle Scapes, um, the Ocean Circle Scapes, I think is what it's called. Um, and it's a beautiful die. It really is. It's so very pretty. Um, but a lot of people would look at that and think the only thing that they can do with that is oceans. That's not true. And we're going to prove it today. So it's just basically an idea that I had to kind of make this die a little bit more versatile and show that you can use it for other things to get more uses out of it. Of course, I'm going to build a scene because that's what I like to do. Um, so pretty much for the um, barn wood planks, I'm using it just to create a shelf on my card um, for my scene. I wanted that super pretty wood grain. Um, and the easiest way that I could get it was stamping it and then putting distress ink over it. And I even <laughs> I even used craft cardstock so I wouldn't have to put as much distress ink down. So once I knew what portion of it I was going to be using, I am just going to take that off camera and trim it down so I can add a little bit more of the ink blending to the other side. And then this is the only portion of this piece that I'm going to use. If you're like, Kelly, I'm not buying a whole die so that I can make a wood grain shelf. I don't blame you. Not at all. Um, but Honeybee does have a pack that is all different types of um, wood grains, like a paper pack that you would also be able to utilize um, if you didn't own a stamp like that. So here I am cutting out. Um, I'm using the um, shaker frames basically just so that I can have a frame for my um, oceanscape because it's going to look like woodwork in my scene. So here all I'm doing with the distress thinking is I'm just, I'm, I'm totally adding color. By the time this is done, it's going to look uh, very much like the seal of the state of Ohio, which was not my intention, but that is what it looks like, y'all. Um, but I wanted to do like a sunrise over rolling hills was the idea that I had. So I'm adding um, some squeezed lemonade and a, just a little bit of mustard seed. And then for the blue portion of the sky, I'm using tumbled glass and salty ocean. I'm just being very careful. If you can see on this, you know, little half moon for the rays, I'm leaving like this little buffer um, of white uh, that's right in between the yellow and the blue so that I don't have a green sky. I'm going to line up. These are all my hills or waves. Um, and then I'm just going to pick several colors of green to um, turn them into hills. So again, just looking at your things that you already own in a different way um, can help you. Um, or if you're looking to purchase something, I know, I can't remember who it was. There was a crafter that I saw that they, when they look at something, they're like, if I can't think of three different ways to use it. I'm not going to buy it. Um, and so, I mean, that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing either. Um, you know, now for me, it's different cause this is my job. Um, but before, especially when I was new into crafting, um, I didn't have a, I don't have an endless budget now either, but my budget was much smaller. And so I would save up my money, um, and do like big shopping sprees um, once in the fall and once in the spring. And honest, honestly, the reason it fell that way is that's because when Hero Arts released their catalogs and back then that's pretty much all I used. Um, but so, I mean, there's, we're all, we're all trying to make it work to be able to enjoy this hobby that we love. Speaking of making it work, um, and getting good deals, Honeybee actually has one of their biggest sales, um, that they've ever had right now. It's 70% off, um, and their sale page. So that again, will be, uh, linked below if you're interested in, in uh, going over there and checking out what they have. Um, so yeah. So that's, I just wanted to show you that there's different ways to use uh, things and hopefully help you to see um, 
to encourage you, I guess, to look at the things that you have differently or the look at things differently than the manufacturer intended to them because you can really kind of stretch them and get different looks. So here, um, once I'm done building this, like I just built it right on that backer piece, then I'm going to, I have a little bit more distress inking to do before I get to the Copa coloring. So for my, I knew that my uh, picture, my window of this sunrise was going to take, take up a good portion of my card and then add in the woodwork and it definitely was, but I still need to kind of set a scene. And so I needed a wall color and what better wall color than Uncharted Mariner? I don't know one. I don't know one, people. So I am using the vintage photo on the bottom just because I'm going to pop my shelf up over top. And then this card could very well be a card like this on its own. But it's me. And we got to make it a scene. And I can't leave well enough alone. So in addition to that, I am going to be doing um, some stamping with some fall. I actually think fresh cut florals. Did that come out in the fall? It might have come out in the spring, but regardless, it'll work for whatever because flowers work any time of year. I don't care what time of year it is. Um, so I'm stamping down the holder, the floral bouquet, two pumpkins, and two little acorns. The way that I ended up building it, I probably didn't need the two little acorns, but I colored them and so I used them. Here, I'm just going to use our um, black ink. This is safe for alcohol markers since I am going to be doing some Copa coloring. So that is why I chose to stamp in this. Um, and then I tried to stamp them far enough apart that I would be able to die cut all of them out. Um, and then, of course, you know, we'll, we'll talk about coloring the white part of the dyes um, to really kind of envelop, like get your image to be enveloped into your scene when we get to that part. So I stamped all those down and then we'll get into the Copa coloring. Uh, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, nothing's changed there. Um, and then just, you may see me doing my shadows just a little bit different, like on the acorns. And the reason that I am adding shadows to just one side or to the top or bottom is because I knew how I wanted them to lay in my scene. And so I was coloring them as if the shadows would be on the portion that's going to lay on the shelf. Um, and so I just picked some browns that would allow me to do that. And then, um, yeah, we'll just go through the Copa coloring and I'll comment on anything um, as we go. So as far as uh, how my life's been, it's it's good. It's good. Um, right. I don't even want to jinx us. Like I don't even want to say it out loud, but right now everybody, can you hear, I wonder if you can hear Molly crying. It's cause it's thunderstorming. Um, so let's, you know what, let's do a Molly update since we're talking about her anyway. It's thunderstorming and I'm not talking about like a crazy wild thunderstorm. I mean, it's raining with low rumbles of thunder. That's what I mean. And she has a lot of anxiety. So I did, um, when I took her in for her follow-up, they gave me a um, a prescription for trazodone, which is a people drug, but they've determined, like Benadryl, that it's okay to be used by dogs. So we have not used it um, because it's kind of like on an as-needed basis, and she's been doing really well with being crated in the room with me. Um, so since it's an as-needed basis, I haven't had to use it yet, but tonight's going to be our night. Tonight is going to be our night. So they said you could add, like, you could give her as much or as, you know, like, you can go up to, I think, two pills. I am i don't, we'll ever need two pills. But they said you need to start with, like, a half and then see how she does. Because um, obviously you don't want her just completely unconscious. Um, but she, uh, she should be a little bit calmer. So after I do this voiceover, um, I will definitely be trying that, but otherwise she is doing good. She's having a hard time, you know, staying immobile. Um, that's just something like being immobile is something that she's just struggles with. And I just think it's not because she wants to go do all those things all the time. It's because she can't do them at all. Like she's being told not to, and she's obstinate, <laughs> not as bad as Emma, but she's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. So we'll see how it goes. We have one more. Um, we're actually almost one month out. Uh, we have like another week to go. And then for the first two months is what they told us is that she's supposed to be um, 
immobile for. So we'll see. Uh, I did set her up downstairs, so I don't want you guys to think like I've just left her to her own devices. Um, her crate downstairs, she seemed to be doing really well with the anxiety. Um, if she had, like, if I put her in her crate with the, a blanket that was covering it. So I didn't want to put her in her crate um, and just kind of leave her alone. I wanted her to be able to be out and be with Emma. So I did put the blanket over the crate and I left the door open. So she has the option to go in there if she needs something to feel more secure. Um, and maybe she's taken that option now because as of right now, the, the crying has, um, stopped. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately I can't have her upstairs with me in my office um, because she's only allowed to just do the stairs one time a day. So with her sleeping up here, like I, I take her down in the morning and then I bring her up at night, but otherwise she stays downstairs. Um, so that does make me feel bad. And I try to spend time with her when I, you know, when I can throughout the day, but like when I have to do a voiceover, like now when we're spending time together, I can't be in the family room with her, unfortunately. So, um, we're, you guys know, if you've been watching my videos that we're gearing up for uh, a new school year. And so, um, I think we finally had everything that was, uh, brought to us, shipped to us. So apparently I told you my mom bought him shoes So he's been on me every day about wearing these shoes. And I was like, mm -mm, buddy, no, mm -mm, those are school shoes. You wear those shoes on the first day of school, not before. You can wear them after, but those are school shoes that you shall wear into the school. So, um, so he's, he's excited about his shoes, but he's talked his other grandmother in somehow. And, and I'm not sure how exactly, um, she, she, I guess told him that she would buy him something for the new school year. And I believe he said that he wanted a backpack. Um, so we are not from Alabama, but his dad is a big Alabama fan. Consequently, it's like one of those things that gets passed down. So peanut is also an Alabama fan. And, um, so he wanted the Alabama backpack, which is fine. Okay. So he tells me, he's looking online, he's like, I need you to take pictures of these and send them to Grandma T so that she can see what I want. And I was like, okay. So the first picture, I hand him my phone and I'm sitting there with him and the first picture is a backpack. But the second picture is a water bottle. And I was like, you're getting a water bottle? I thought you were getting a backpack. And he was like, no, I'm going to get them both greedy, greedy. And I was like, I don't think so, buddy. So then as he, he, get, he hands me back my phone because he's done taking the pictures. I send them to uh, Grandma T, to Eric's mom. And I was like, hey, I don't know what you guys discussed, but this is what he told me to send you. So this is what I'm sending you. And then as I am sending it, I'm looking at the photo and that water bottle was $32.99. A water bottle for $33. So immediately after I send it, I start texting her back. Like, listen, grandma, that's insane. Don't you dare buy that water bottle. And she was like, no, 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 I'll, I'll get the backpack. But she did, um, which like good for her. She said, um, she was like, well, the backpack that he picked out doesn't have place for a water bottle. And I'm pretty sure he needs one. It has like no outside pockets. It was more like a college style, like an older kid's backpack. Um, so I did double check that with him and he said he did need a place to put his water. And so uh, we ended up getting a different Alabama backpack, but he's very excited about that. For Miss Caitlin, she's been doing good. We are one week off of the anti-vomit meds and she has been holding her own. She's been doing really good. Um, so we're back to, cause we had stopped giving her the baby food. We were just feeding her formula when she was throwing up. Um, because if you have to clean up baby throw up, the only benefit is, is that there's no food in it. Right. So I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna short myself of that small victory. Um, so she's back on the baby foods and we're starting to incorporate, um, some real people foods. So today she had some pancakes and some bananas, uh, which she enjoyed immensely. And I think that I've just been more hesitant to give her like real people food 
um, just because, like, there's something going on with, like, when she's eating, I'm scared to death she's going to choke. One time, and, and I've probably told you guys the story before, um, like, one time Peanut choked on a Tootsie Roll, and it just was so, it was such a terrifying experience. Um, and obviously he ended up being fine, but it was not good. So I'm just a roll she doesn't want to chew her food before she eats it. And so I'm real just very nervous about her eating people food. Um, you know, obviously she doesn't eat alone. I'm like, I'm sitting there watching her. Oh wait, we have to go back to the card. So here, this like hydrangea style flower, I wanted to just make note of this. Um, because everything's been status quo as far as the coloring, but this particular flower is drawn in such detail, um, that, there is no, like, I did not feel like I could go in there and do um, proper flower by flower shading. It's still a very pretty flower, but in order to get any shading on it, I filled the whole thing in with my lightest color, and then I went in with the next darkest colors and just did a series of dots or stippling, and then I'm going to do the same thing in reverse, going back in with my lighter colors to remove some of it. This is going to create some highlights and some shadows in that flower and give it color without me like pulling my hair out, trying to go in there and find each individual um, flower petal. So that's a technique that you can use if something um, is super like fine detailed like that and you're not sure how to get in there and add your shadows. For the greens, when you're choosing a color palette for your cards, try to be conscientious. Um, and it's not always true. Like, there's a lot of colors going on in this card. But I try to be conscientious about how many colors I'm bringing in. So since it's a bouquet, it makes sense to have a lot of colors. But I'm not going to want to bring in a bunch more greens to compete with the hills in my greens. Like, they're... I purposely chose two different green combinations that were already included in my hills, my ink blending colors, so that they would be a complement to each other instead of competing um, for, you know, time in the forefront. So I chose a yellow green and I chose a true green that already matched what I had. Um, for the shading for this um glass bowl or vase, vase, whatever we're going to call it. We're going to keep it real nice and simple. We want to give it some dimension, but, you know, it's supposed to be clear. So I'm going to add some shadows um, in the back of the opening. I'm going to add some shadows at the base where it all gathers together. And then I'm going to add shadows kind of like on the middle of the edge. Um, so you want to leave this little gap on the side that's going to help give it more roundness and the illusion of transparency. And then you're going to go over it with your, I started with my darker colors for this one, um, because I'm confident in where those lines are going to go. But if you're not, please start with your lightest color, work out to your darkest and then darkest back to your lightest. For the detail, I am using my white gel pen. I used it on the glass bowl. I'm also going to use it on the flowers, um, you know, to create some centers, especially in that hydrangea piece, as well as the two um, flowers that are at the forefront. I, that one looks like a Gerber daisy. I, I'm not sure what the other one is. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and die cut these out so that I can build my arrangement and uh, finally put my card together. So anyhow, back to Caitlin. Um so she she very much enjoys her snacks. I'm just a little bit apprehensive because she doesn't really seem to be chewing her food. Um, she just kind of wants to gulp it down, even like her puffs. Um, and so it just makes me nervous. So if there's any tips you, you got out there for how to help her ensure she eats her like she chews her food, um, eating it's not a problem. She's she's for that, um, but that she's chewing it. Like please, by all means, uh, let me know. So here, I have my base um, with that like wall paint color, and then I glued down. I used my frame to get the placement correct, and then I just held it there while I glued down my um, sunrise. 
And again, this is just um, to, I, the illusion I was trying to create was like a, a wind, like a picture window out um, over these these rolling hills. I am gonna pop my shelf up on foam tape um, just to give this a little bit more dimension, so that it looks as if the shelf or table is in fact sitting in front of this. Um, I keep wanting to call it a picture. This window. And then, so that means I do have to be a little bit creative with my foam taping. Anything that hangs over the shelf will need to have foam tape on it, but anything that's going to sit on the shelf will need to have glue. And I did run into a little bit of an issue with this particular one where I had to move it. Um, I did rip my paper when I moved it, but I knew that it was like this whole shelf was basically going to be covered up by um, pumpkins and acorns and stuff. So I wasn't too worried about how that was going to look. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always I always tell you guys about the kids and recap you on the kids. Uh, I'm excited for myself um, because I have a hair appointment. I have not had my hair done since... Caitlin, since before Caitlin was born, uh, and she is nine months old, but her nine month photos are coming up. Um, my birthday is coming up. Our wedding anniversary is coming up. And I'm like, you know, I would really like to have my hair did for those things. That would be nice. Um, so I did go ahead and make that appointment to get that done. And I honestly have no idea what I'm going to do. I've had the same haircut-ish, uh, which I can't even say, I don't even know if it's a haircut, because uh, it's all, just always been long. Um, it's been long my whole life. I cut it off one time, regretted it, instant regret. Uh, <laughs> um, but, it, but my sister looks beautiful in short hair, not me, and we look similar, so you'd think that would be true for both of us, but it's not. Um... But anywho, so I've been, I've done like the blonde highlights, um, I've done caramel, I've done red, uh, highlights, lowlights, like I've, I've mixed it up quite a bit. I'm more, much more willing to play with my color than I am with my cut because, you know, I can't pick it up off the floor and glue it back to my head. So, um, I, I don't know, we'll have to see what they, they have to say because at this point my roots are so long. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing like a balayage, which is easier to grow out because it's a more natural look versus highlights, um, like very segregated highlights and lowlights. I don't know. Well, I'm going to, I've never been to this girl before. I have been to the studio before, but my regular girl, um, can I even call her regular? I haven't been there in nine months. Uh, but the girl I had seen before, uh, was booked. So I'm trying somebody now. Hopefully it works out for me. So here, you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of the white outline, really more specifically in scene cards. And so because I want these die cuts to kind of uh, melt back into the scene in which I'm intending, I do color my the white portion of my die cuts. In a scene like this, it can seem like it's a little bit daunting, um, you know, and, and overwhelming to get in there. But honestly, if you just go section by section, um, you can see, I, I've sped it up here, but you can see that it does go by pretty quickly um, if you just go in and pay attention, like, you know, find your colors. People ask me, well, how do you find your colors? I eyeball them. Like, I pick out one that I think is going to be close. I test it on a small portion. If it's not close, I just try another color. Um, you know, it's not 100%. Obviously, I do quite a bit of Copa coloring, so my eyeballing might be better than others. You could always use a scrap piece of paper, but it doesn't really have to be perfect. Um, like this BG09 is what I'm using for the uh, wall color. It's not 100%. And so it was too bright. I needed to knock it back a little bit. So I just went right over top of it with a C3 and that was enough to, to knock it back to help it blend. For the lighter colors, like where the sun is, um, I just used the flower as kind of like a way to break it up. So I have my yellow on one side and my blue on the other. And then um, for the sentiment, 
I really didn't want to do anything that was going to take away from the scene that we just built. And so I decided that I was going to do just a little black label and almost like sit it on the shelf as a decoration. Have you seen those? We have a couple in our house. They were really popular probably like 10 years ago because Lord knows my um, decoration is dated. Uh, but they're like the black signs with the white um, lettering, but they're kind of like distressed. And they say things like, um, uh, like you know, dog kisses here, stuff like that. Um, and so that was kind of my idea is I could just put that down there and it would act as one of those signs and not really distract from the scene. Um, and so I'm adding some shimmers to the flowers, to the sun, uh, to the sun rays. And then um, that is it. That's the whole card. So I hope that you learned a little bit of something. I hope that you are inspired to look at your dyes a little bit differently and see how versatile they can be. And then again, um, I will link below that 70% off sale if you're looking to pick something up. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.